come see Rhea and I in person this weekend in Orlando at Animal Con. That's right guys, we're going to be there together and it's going to be a lot of fun. If you'd like a discount for $5 off, please check the description below for that code. And also if you enjoy the content and want to see more like it and would like to help the birds and I out expand, bring in new birds, and give all these wonderful animals wonderful homes, please consider checking us out on Patreon or check out our merch or anything like that or even just a simple donation so we can upgrade misters, have more plants, and just really get this place beautiful. Patrons and channel members also get an opportunity to see videos like this early. You also get access to a private channel on Discord that has direct contact with me. Again guys, I can't thank you enough. This video has been so long in the making just to get this aviary up and finally get the birds out, and I really hope that you guys enjoy it. All right, guys, it's time to let them out. Sorry, I look i look probably horrible right now. <laughs> but um, we're gonna start with Lalo first and work our way up. The reason I'm gonna start with Lalo is because he's been extra restless lately and poor dude's been probably um, just completely horny out of his mind because it's breeding season and we haven't been able to let him out. Um, side for the last a little over a week so they're all getting a little restless so I'm, I can't wait to put them out but um, anyways here we Beatrix is on the ground. <laughs> Lolo's well, well, got his little blueberry there. How you, how you liking it, Lolo? What do you think? I was afraid they would get up on those corners like Jade's doing. I'm going to have to cover it somehow. Oh, she flew back down. They look <laughs> incredibly tiny in here. I mean, look at Rhea, like, way back in that corner there. I'm surprised Lalo has warmed up the quickest, honestly. He's usually the scaredy cat. I put some food back there, so Rhea was getting some a little bit earlier. Beatrix's tail feathers are a little messed up from dragging them on the ground earlier. Huh? Still got your little comfort blueberry. Man, that shed just looks horrible. <sighs> Gotta get that eyesore out of here. Let's uh let's go say hi to Rhea. I get some palm thatch and put it up in the corner so they can't get up there. Maybe even along the sides up there. So they stay down on the perches instead of up there in the metal. And a blueberry? Nice and shady in here. And yeah, what do you think about all this? You like it? I have to cut those bolts off. We forgot to cut them. Another one. Oh, that one's not good enough. And you got some food right here if you need it. Rhea 
is doing back there. <laughs> There's Jade having some food. Okay, well this is working out better now. I was worried for a bit they would be too stressed to even think about eating or drinking, but Rhea's over there playing in water. And uh, Jade and Beatrix have both gone over to that feeding area and have eaten. And Lalo's just, I don't know what his issue is, but he's just overly confident. He's just all over the place, flying around. Oh. There goes Beatrix. It's going to take them some getting used to, but once they learn where everything is, they'll be a lot more comfortable. You're just a little confident one, aren't you? I didn't expect you to get so confident out here and comfortable so quickly. <clears throat> All three of the other ones have basically stayed back in that area for the most part. But Lalo here has just been out exploring and flying around. What do you think, buddy? You like it? I'm sure you guys will be ultra happy once you get used to where everything is. Let's go see what everybody else is doing. <laughs> what she got there, buddy? <laughs> you got a stick? There's a zip tie there I left on accident. <laughs> I guess you can play with zip ties if you want. Nope. Hey guys, voiceover Brock here. I just wanted to pop in here real quick and say that there might not be any talking in some parts of this, at least not me talking in the moment. You see, because I'm going to come back in here and do some voiceover, like I'm doing right now, and the reason being is because I wanted to kind of just be quiet and let them do their thing and come out and feel a little bit more comfortable. I was afraid, especially with like Beatrix and Jade, that me talking might discourage them from exploring. So periodically I might come back in here and give a little expositional explanation, if you will, uh, as to what's going on. But other than that, it's mostly just going to be observation. One of the things we immediately ran into, and you would notice in when we first released Beatrix, she couldn't get herself up off the ground very well. So for the first couple of weeks, she spent a fair amount of time on the ground just because she wasn't skilled enough to ascend her flight to get back up on perches. 
So you can see her hopping around a little bit, and then she just starts sunbathing for some reason on the ground. Um, but I approach her and just uh, I put my arm down and try to offer it to her just to see, see uh, she, you know, I knew she probably wouldn't jump up on it, but I just thought I'd give it a shot. Um, but yeah, you can see her hopping around here. And that's the reason why she's doing that. And there was a lot of footage of her doing that, but this is the clip that made it into the final edit. Well, it's been a few hours. Um, I decided to go inside and just um, let them kind of have some time to themselves out here to get used to everything. Um, Beatrix was making me nervous specifically. I wanted her to get more comfortable being out here. It's hard to imagine. Beatrix, when I got her, she was living in a guinea pig cage and has probably I can't imagine any instance where she has ever touched grass, ever. And this is the most space that she's ever had where she could feel comfortable. Because even inside, you know, the house, she wasn't comfortable there. So, she's not a very skilled flyer or explorer, but she's warmed up quite a bit now, just over the, ne or the next couple of, or, uh, can't speak, the last couple of hours. Um, you know, where she's sitting, you can see Jade back there, too. And she's sitting out here in the middle, just enjoying herself. And, uh, hopping around exploring. And, um, you know, people don't understand when you have a bird and you clip their wings or you keep them in a small cage or that sort of thing, that they just, you know, lose the ability to fly. Um, it's a skill they have to learn to ascend and descend and fight against winds and stuff like that when they're flying and um, if they've never had an opportunity whether it be from being kept in a small cage and getting muscle atrophy and stuff like that or um, having their wings clipped they you know they lose strength in the muscles they don't have the motor skills for it anymore and I think about a fledgling bird, you know, it takes a while for them to learn the skills they need to fly, and until then, they're kind of clumsy. So Beatrix was basically trying to relearn that now for the first time. She's never had this much space, you know. Um, I don't think there's many toucans that aren't wild that have this much space, um, especially not in North America, at least. But... Uh, you know, it's going to take them a little bit to get used to all that because it's just sensory overload. I mean, if I even just put one new toy or perch in their sleeping enclosures or whatever, or even in the other aviary, that would freak them out for a little bit. So, <clears throat> um, but, you know, I, I don't know. That feels like just the best way to do it is throw them in the deep end. And, um, you can see Lalo's like... He's, he does this too. He did it up in the other aviary. He'd sit by the door and just fluff up and hold food in his mouth. Sometimes he regurgitated food earlier and was just holding it. I think this is a breeding thing because he's the only one that does it. But he just like sits there on the floor and clicks just rapidly. And it's not that he is, uh, there's something wrong with him. It's just, it's just something he does. <laughs> And he taps his beak, you know, on the side and does all the little breeding behaviors. I don't know why he's chosen to do it on the floor in the corner. Um, it's not the first, I mean, he's done this for the past year, so it's funny to see him doing it now. And then Rhea has, Rhea's just sitting behind me. It's kind of funny they have all this space and Rhea and Lala have both chosen to just come sit next to me. That kind of feels nice when that happens. Um... You know, because they have all the, they can go wherever they want out here, but they want to come sit next to me. 
That's what we want. We want them to have the freedom to go where they want. And if they want to come up near me, then they're welcome to, but we don't want to force them to do anything they don't want to do. You know, just let them thrive and be birds and hang out. So you can see Beatrix's tail looks a lot better now over just the past couple hours. She's cleaned it up and she may have bathed, I'm not sure. Uh, preened it back to how it should look. I think Jade's tail is still looking a little scraggly, but <clears throat> they'll clean themselves up there. But it's nice to see Beatrix up here hanging out and uh, jumping around. Because even in the other aviary, there wasn't enough room for her to really get a good flight going. You know, she could flutter and hop to, from one branch to another, but she's never had the opportunity to fly you know, length like the other birds have. Um, I imagine Jade probably has before. Um, given she seems way more wild, she probably actually did grow up in the wild. If Beatrix may, she's either um, one of those, what do they call it, backyard breeding. She might be a backyard breeding situation or she may have just been taken from the wild at a much younger age. Um, you can tell she didn't get the proper nutrition as a baby because her beak is more washed out and not as defined as Jade's is. Um, which makes me a little nervous because it makes me wonder if... She, I've noticed that she overheats more easily or she gets warmer more easily than the other birds. So I'm wondering if there's some issue with her beak where she can't regulate her body temperature as well. Um, I've always tried to keep an eye on that. So... I'm wondering how she's going to do now. It makes me a little nervous them being out here and it being so hot lately. Um, I just have to keep reminding myself that they're evolved to live in a harsh, humid rainforest and uh, they don't need as much babying as I think they do. As much as I want to baby them, they're my babies, of course. But, um, you know, they're, they're smarter and more well adapted and, uh, all that stuff, then we give them credit for. They can figure it out. They've been around for a long time. I mean, they're theropod ancestors. Well, they are theropods, but their dinosaur, their non-avian dinosaur ancestors have been around for, you know, 200 million years or something. So, there's a reason why birds are still alive and thriving as much as they are today. They are survivors and they deserve more credit for that. So, um, since I've, I think, it, you know, the next couple days they're really going to get warmed up to everything. But, um, it's interesting to see them react to so much space. Uh, Lalo really adapted quickly. Which I thought was odd. Jade, I think Lalo and Jade probably adapted the quick, the quickest out of any of them. Um, of course, Lalo, when he was a baby, he was given lots of space to fly and adapt and all that sort of thing. From uh, all those things from his breeder, his breeder was good. So, Rhea, I know she lived outside, but she was in a way smaller enclosure, so she might be a little bit more overloaded in the sensory department. But, um, you know, a new environment always kind of freaks them out a little bit. But they'll be flying around confidently soon, I'm sure. What's she looking for?
trying to put food in there, buddy? There's nothing in there. No girlfriends. You and I are in the same boat there, buddy. Yep, nobody's in there. Nobody to feed. James finally come out. Let's be very quiet. She went back in. That didn't take long.
in the area. Digging a hole. This is kind of funny because I recorded this for an entirely different video that didn't really come to fruition, but I figured I'd throw it in here. I'm trying to just work with Beatrix and see if I can get her to come up closer to me, like voluntarily, and just uh, spend time with her. And then Lalo kind of started getting in the way, and it just led to this funny moment that I wanted to include. No, not you. Get out of here. Go. You have to go to other places. Come on. Come on. Go. Get. I am one. Thank you.